Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Atog, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Atog, so again, Atog, thank you so much. And for today's episode, Atog's gonna handle the intro for me. Hello everyone, Atog here from Belgium. Today I would love to talk about some strange creature types. So, like Atog said, today we're gonna be talking about the strangest creature types in Magic. Magic has been around for quite some time. There are a ton of cards and a ton of different creature types. And yeah, some of them can get quite strange. And strange for different reasons. Some of them are pretty off the wall and, well, unexpected. Uh, when putting together this list, I gotta be honest, I found some, well, ones that I definitely forgot exist. So with all that said, let's jump into it. First up, and yeah, I've got to start with this one, of course, we've got Atogs. So obviously this creature type can be seen on, well, Atog, the Atog. <laughs> and then we've got Psychotog, which is a card from my childhood I'll talk about here in a bit. And of course, the commander of the Atogs, Atogatog. Uh, according to MTG Wiki, Atog is a creature type describing a species of small creatures known for their insatiable appetites and unusual diets. Atogs come in a wide variety of forms, but most uniformly possess a humanoid shape, reptilian or amphibian appearance, bulging eyes, and enormous toothy mouths. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty accurate representation of each of these uh, when it comes to their insatiable appetites. Yeah, they love to eat. I mean, Atog itself sacrifices artifacts and gets larger, plus two, plus two until end of turn. So yeah, loving to eat artifacts a bit weird but perhaps not as weird as psychotog which maybe well, let's just say this one eats thoughts i would say discard a card from your hand psychotog gets plus plus one until end of turn and by exiling two cards from your graveyard psychotog gets plus plus one until end of turn so yeah maybe thoughts and dreams let's just say that that's what psychotog eats i mean at least that's what it was eating back in standard a long long time ago when this took over the format with upheaval yeah that was a disgusting deck anyways a tog a tog a commander of a togs that likes to eat well a togs by eating a togs it gets larger based on how big that a tog was so uh, essentially you know there's always a bigger fish you know you feed your a togs the you know whatever food they want again a tog wants artifacts like a tog wants hopes and dreams <laughs> and a tog a tog wants to eat a togs so yeah just feed them and uh don't try to get water on them or something. I mean, that's actually gremlins. They kind of look like gremlins a little bit though, but but yeah, I mean, the description I think is pretty spot on. Bulgy eyes, giant mouths with some teeth, and a very unusual appetite. So yeah, togs are definitely strange creatures. Next up though, we've got beebles with cards like bouncing beebles and bubbling beebles. First up, let's just read the flavor text on Bouncing Beebles. Beebles are frequently hurled against stone surfaces at high speed, but always zing back into the air with a giggle. First off, who is deciding to just chuck these adorable little whatever they are at high speeds at stone surfaces? That's just mean. But yeah, I mean, obviously these things seem to be pretty rubbery or something like that. They can just bounce right off. And uh, I mean, also being mean to Beebles, apparently. Let's read the other flavor text. Chancellor Rain canceled the annual Beeble roast. I should have married a crueler woman, uh, says Baron, apparently. See, apparently they roast these as well. So not only do they just chuck these little things at walls, but they also eat them. Well, MTG Wiki might have some insight into these, you know, adorable little pink, you know, or looks like also gray creatures. According to them, Beeble is a creature type describing a magical construct similar to a homunculus, which is used by the research of the Telerian Academy as a convenient, easily summoned demonstration subject. Uh, okay, so I mean, I guess that's how they're demonstrating things like, hey, look, I can chuck this, you know, homunculus type thing into a wall and it's fine. Or, you know, we can just summon it and if we're hungry and, you know, eat it. So, I mean, the Talarians might be even weirder than the Atogs, which just eat whatever. I mean, apparently Talarians eat Beebles. Who knew? But yeah, a creature type that we have not seen very often at all. I believe these are actually the only two, you know, legal ones in Commander that are Beebles. So we shall see if there are more Beebles to come in the future. But yeah, quite the strange creature type indeed. Moving on, how about Lissids? Yeah, this is also a very old creature type that... We have a not seen for quite some time. And yeah, if you don't see the actual creature type on the car, that means, you know, the Oracle text has the actual creature type, like Transmogrifying Lissid, just an artifact creature, but yeah, it is a Lissid, trust me, okay? 
I mean, I guess it even says underneath it, transmogrifying lizard counts as a lizard, but regardless, yes, transmogrifying lizard, convulsing lizard, and leeching lizard are all lizards, which in all honesty, look very much like face huggers from Alien. I, I mean, uh, convulsing lizard especially. And yeah, as strange as these creatures look, their abilities might be even stranger. I mean, let's just take a look at transmogrifying lizard. And, and I'm just gonna read the Oracle text because it's a very old card. Here we go. Pay one and tap. Transmogrifying Lizard loses this ability and becomes an aura enchantment with enchant creature attached to target creature. And you may pay one to end this effect. Enchanted creature gets plus plus one and is an artifact addition to its other types. So essentially these Lizards, well, kind of stop being creatures and just attach themselves to other creatures and well, either have a negative or a positive effect. In this case, a positive effect. Whereas Convulsing Lizard, well, is a negative effect. Essentially the exact same thing, but Enchanted creature can't block. So, yeah, a downside. Or how about Leeching Lizard? At the beginning of the upkeep of Enchanted Creatures Controller, Leeching Lizard deals one damage to that player. So, again, downside. So, essentially, Lizards are like parasites, it seems. In fact, let's look at MTG Wiki and see what they have to say. Lizards are parasitic, hey, there we go, or symbolic beings of a slug like or insectoid nature with six, generally, limbs and a tail found on the plane of wrath. And yeah, I believe we have only seen Lissids from way back when. We have not seen any in quite some time. I mean, I think the last time we saw them was the Tempest block. So will these strange creatures ever make a resurgence? Only time will tell. And speaking of very, very old creatures, and these I believe are from the Invasion block, well, this is kind of a strange one because these creatures are um, ships. Yeah, this is before vehicles were a thing. But uh, but yeah, we've got Living Airship, Metathran Aerostat, and Metathran Transport. So yeah, ships that are apparently creatures. Now, okay, to be fair, these have been routed. They now have the Oracle text that says that they are not, in fact, ships. Even though, clearly, if you look at the pictures, um, they are ships. And one of them's name is literally Living Airship, which means it's not actually, you no know, those, you know, creatures that are on top of it, but it's actually the ship itself. And, and obviously the same is true for the other ones. I mean, one is actually a transport. Now, obviously these days, if these cards came out, they'd be designed in different ways and they would be, well, you know, not creatures. They would be vehicles. So with the Arata, instead of them being ships, unfortunately, well, they have been changed to be Metathran. Which, you know, are those blue-ish creatures that are on top of the ship, and yeah, I, I mean, okay, but, but still, clearly ships. I understand why mechanically they are no longer ships, because again, vehicles are a thing, uh, but, but yeah. Clearly, with the names and with the images, um, these are ships. And of course, we have seen, you know, other ships as well in Magic's history, like, you know, Pirate Ship and, you know, like Skeleton Ship. Which is actually a legendary creature that now is just apparently a skeleton for whatever reason, even though it clearly, again, is a ship. So yeah, we have seen ships in magic, though again, they have been errated, probably because vehicles are a thing, you know, to actually just be, well, whatever is probably piloting the actual ship. Still really weird, though, when you see the creature type ship on an actual card. But speaking of strange, next up, let's talk about, well, another very weird creature with... Brushwag and Almighty Brushwag. And yeah, I mean, it just looks like a giant ball of branches, and that's pretty much what it is, apparently. And on the right, you can see all the other animals are quite hesitant to go anywhere near this thing because, again, it is the Almighty Brushwag. So, in a way, I mean, I guess if I had to make a comparison to an actual animal, it's kind of like a porcupine, but again, with like just debris. I mean, not debris, I guess, but like, again, branches or whatnot. And yeah, I mean, other animals don't want to get poked by those, you know, branches or whatnot, but, but yeah, a very strange creature to say the least, kind of like a rodent looking creature, which of course is not all that weird until you get to the actual branches. But yeah, let's read MTG Wiki real quick. A brushwag is an animal of varying size, which looks like a heap of animated kindling. Its body is covered in twigs, which make a characteristic noise when it moves. So yeah, I mean, animated kindling is a very good way of describing this very strange creature. And again, I believe we've only actually ever seen two of these in Magic's history. Now, one has been more recent. We saw one in Ikoria, apparently. When I believe initially it was just Dominaria, so we shall see. Maybe the Brushwag are working to take over the entire multiverse. Who knows? Regardless if they are taking over the multiverse or not, yeah, a very, very strange creature type. Speaking of which, and I've got to bring this one up because it's one of my favorite commanders of all time, let's talk about the creature type that is Feldegriff, which we of course can see with, well, Feldegriff and Questing Feldegriff. 
and, and yeah, although, you know, it's an older card from, I believe, Alliances, we can see, you know, it says Summon Legend, but obviously it's been a red to now say Feldegriff. Feldegriffs are actually a pretty straightforward, you know, strange creature, essentially. They are, you know, a purple hippo that has wings. Now, how in the world do those wings carry that purple hippo? No idea. Magic, I guess, right? Just looked it up. Yeah, the average uh, male adult uh, hippo weighs between 3,300 pounds and 4,000 pounds, so... Um, good luck to those wings, I guess. Because, yeah, I mean, that weighs more than a compact car. I mean, that's around, like, you know, a mid-sized, even a larger car. But, you know, I guess, you know, if creatures can be ships, and, you know, creatures can also be made up of twigs, uh, some wings apparently can carry a hippo. Now, really quick, one fun fact about this strange creature is that Feldegriff is actually an anagram for Garfield PhD. Referring to, of course, Richard Garfield, PhD, the creator of magic. And if you didn't know that before... No, you do, and have fun telling your friends that. Anyways, strange creature, indeed. Next up, I actually already referenced these in the Beebles, which are, you know, basically apparently a form of a homunculus, but yeah, in Magic we also have homunculus, like, you know, hazy homunculus, fibble flip, and component collector. Now, I will note that initially, homunculus, even one that has the name homunculus and its actual card name, like hazy homunculus, was not a creature type. It was considered to be an illusion, at least this one was. Regardless, although obviously, you know, cute. Okay, well, not Hazy Monculus, but Fibble Flip, very cute. Component Collector, also very cute. Um, yeah, not quite the same as Beebles. Beebles seem to be much tinier. And again, uh, I mean, you shouldn't really chuck Fibble Flip at a wall. That would just be mean. But of course, as you can see, we've seen different variations of homunculi. I believe it would be homunculi, right? With the most famous one, though, being Fibble Flip, of course, which, you know, is lost. Totally lost. I believe that was the card that actually made Fibblefoot famous, but yeah, I mean, I believe each of these are just basically homunculi that have one singular eye. And according to MG Wiki, I didn't realize actually that homunculus is Latin for little human, which kind of makes sense. These are like humanoid looking creatures. Regardless, they are artificially made, but sentient and living miniature humans. And of course, you know, homunculi aren't just, you know, unique to magic. They, of course, have been, you know, in other things. I mean, like Full Metal Alchemist, if you've seen that, obviously, you know, you're familiar with homunculus, though they obviously can be displayed differently. But yeah, as you can see, even within magic itself, they can be displayed in a lot of different ways and have changed over time. And, and yeah, many of them are just quite adorable, like, you know, Fibble Flip and Component Collector. Looking forward to seeing even more strange and cute homunculi in the future. And another creature type I am looking forward to seeing even more of in the future. Hopefully, we've got Homerids. Like Homerid, a very, very old card from all the way back in 94. Or Deep Spawn, which is also a Homerid, apparently. And then Homerid Explorer, which I believe came out back in Dominaria. But yeah, I mean, from my understanding, Homerids are like crab people, kind of. That being said, there aren't very many of them, and yeah, in Magic, we also just do have crabs, apparently. We've got, like, 33 crabs with only 7 homerids. According to MG Wiki, homerid is a creature type for cards that depict sapient, lobster-like creatures that thrive in cold water. And sapient can mean, you know, wise or attempting to appear wise, or probably more so in this situation, relating to the human species. So, again, crab people. But yeah, definitely a strange creature type, one that I'm hoping to see more often. I mean, just look at that one on the right, just like, oh, hey, look at me. I'm carrying around a staff and such. Look, I'm helping, okay? I've got my little claws to help with things. Homerid Commander Wen! Bring me a legendary Homerid, please. Thank you. But yeah, overall, a strange creature type I hope to see more of. Speaking of which, and speaking of quote-unquote commanders, or again, controversial commanders in a way, let's talk about the Nephilim, with some examples like Witch Maw, Doombrood, and Ink Treader. And I do say again, kind of quote-unquote commanders, because, well, I, I mean, the, the Nephilim are definitely like, you know, legendary creatures that for some reason are not legendary, and, and there's a lot of debate around you know, that. These definitely should have been legendary creatures. There's no way they shouldn't have been. There are not multiple of these things running around, okay? I mean, you can even just see that in the flavor text for these strange creatures, and each of them looking stranger than the last. I mean, Witch Maw is kind of like No Face-ish from Spirited Away. Very strange looking. Its flavor text reads, When it awoke, it shattered the hillsides to make way for its passage. Uh, I don't think normal creatures out there do that. And again, I highly doubt there's two of these walking around. Or how about Dune Brood, which is just like expelling a bunch of sand creatures. Anyways, when it awoke, it spawned nameless thousands to herald its arrival. Again, not two of these running around. Or how about whatever in the world Ink Trader Nephilim is and looks like. That, I mean, I don't even know how to describe that. Regardless, when it awoke, the mirrors of the world reflected only darkness. 
and somehow not a legendary creature. Wizards, what are you doing? But yeah, the Nephilim, in all honesty, might take the cake for the weirdest creatures in Magic. I mean, they definitely have a spot toward the top, in my opinion. But just overall, the design, the look, the feel, and just, yeah, what in the world are these? Apparently, according to MGG Wiki, in the storyline, uh, well, Nephilim were powerful monstrosities with limited intelligence that were venerated by the Cult of Yore, who saw them as the Old Gods. As such, they were a symbol of the old Ravnica before the time of the Guild Pact. So yeah, in total, there were five of these, each one pretty much stranger than the last. Definitely strange creatures, and again, in my opinion, perhaps the strangest creatures of all time in Magic. Moving on, though, a very strange creature type, in my opinion, are the Zubara, with ones like, you know, Rushing Tide Zubara, Silent Chant Zubara, and Burning Eye Zubara. Kind of like the Nephilim, each of them have very different and unique designs. I mean, the one thing that I see kind of in common with these, at least, is that, like, they have a, a face, but, like, no face. They've got, I mean, they've got a head, I guess I should say. Maybe some teeth, you know, in the, you know, Rushing Tide example. But no eyes, no nose. Some identifying facial features are missing, and it's just kind of creepy. Yeah, if Witchmaw Nephilim, you know, reminds me of, again, like, No Face from Spirit Away, Rushing Tide Zubra kind of reminds me, actually, in Silent Chant as well, kind of remind me of whatever that monster's name is in Pan's Labyrinth, you know, with the, the eyes on the hands, that, that weird thing. And I know spirits can be, you know, very different and very strange, but the Zubra have always really kind of just seemed exceedingly strange, even for a spirit in my mind. And perhaps that's actually just because, you know, what they actually are. According to MGD Wiki, a Zubra is a faceless kami of a human who has been pulled into the spirit world. Zubra are said to attack solitary travelers in order to steal their faces. Um, gross and scary. So yeah, there's a reason why some of these are, well, at least to me, so off-putting. And just kind of uh, creepy. Now, Rushing Tide Zubra kind of reaching out is even more ominous. So, definitely a strange creature type. Again, even for a spirit, these are definitely strange to me. Next up, speaking of strange, we have got to talk about the Lovecraftian horrors that are Eldrazi. Now, unlike some of the other creature types that I've gone through on this episode, you know, like Beebles, which there are two of them, uh, Brushwikes, also two of them, uh, I have Nephilim, five of them, there are actually a decent amount of Eldrazi out there, though of course the original three are Ulamog, Kozlek, and Emrakul. So, you know, players out there in Magic have become more and more accustomed to seeing Eldrazi, so maybe they not, may not appear to be all that strange. But, but yeah, I mean, when you actually take a look at them, they are very, very strange. Again, Lovecraftian horrors, essentially. According to MGG Wiki, Eldrazi is a creature type describing an ancient race native to the Blind Eternities that have neither physical form nor color alignment. Their nature is ceaseless hunger, so they travel between planes devouring the mana and life energy until the plane's destruction. Basically, giant space monsters that eat planets. And again, though they do not have, you know, a physical form, basically, I mean, they look like giant squid monster thingies. You know, Lovecraftian. I just gotta keep saying it, right? So, although, again, I feel like Magic players these days are probably more used to actually seeing some things like these in Magic, still, Eldrazi is definitely a strange creature type. Next up, okay, I, I just got a couple of really fun ones at the end here. Um, Coward. Coward is a hilarious creature type, like, you know, we see on Craven Hulk. And actually, I believe this is the only coward in Magic, and, and yes, I know, okay. Ah, uh, excuse me, actually, uh, there are changelings out there in Magic, and, uh, there are every creature type, so you're wrong! <clears throat> yeah, okay, I know changelings exist, I got it, okay? Anyways, giant coward, hilarious. And yeah, I just really find it funny that Coward is an actual creature type in Magic now, which is just fantastic. And to clarify, yes, although this is the only actual Coward in Magic, there are other cards that mention Cowards, like, you know, Boldwire Intimidator can make creatures into Cowards. Cool. This is the only actual one that is just inherently a Coward, except, yes, I know, Changelings. Anyways, moving on. One final strange creature type that I do want to bring up is actually, to me, a very weird one. This one's a Flag Bearer. Yes, that still exists in Magic. That has not been errated. Standard Bearer is a Flag Bearer still. Now errated to be a Human Flag Bearer, you know, like the Coalition Honor Guard, but still a Flag Bearer. That is, to me, just a very weird creature type. And yes, I know that's kind of more like, you know, like what they do, sure. But uh, the fact that that's actually a creature type is just quite comical, at least to me. Regardless, yeah, I got a lot of really fun examples, but also just some really strange creatures when you dig down into it in magic. And of course, at the end of the day, wizards, legendary Nephilim, Homrid Commander. Thank you. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.
This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.